Hey, everybody, and welcome to this great uh, tech talk. Uh, this is all about getting more out of uptime and performance monitoring uh, with a slant to synthetic monitoring. Let me just jump in. There's a lot to cover. Uh, my name is Matt Ball. I am a product marketing manager here at Splunk. Uh, I handle all things digital experience monitoring. So that is the combined sum of Splunk real user monitoring and what we're gonna talk about today, Splunk Synthetic Monitoring, uh, formerly Rigor. Uh, with me is Billy Hoffman. Billy Hoffman has over 15 years in web performance. Uh, he's written two books on web performance and secure websites. Um, he is our senior principal engineer here at Splunk. Billy, you wanna just say hi? Yes, hey Matt, happy to be here. Awesome, uh, we're gonna throw it over to Billy soon. Uh, but let's jump into what we're going to talk about today. Here's just a brief agenda. Uh, we're going to go through what's new. Well, what's new is there is a lot new. Uh, we're going to jump then quickly into kind of the show and tell. Uh, we're going to demo uh, some of the product uh, and some use cases for you. And we're going to jump back out and reiterate uh, the use cases, the whys of synthetic monitoring uh, within full stack monitoring. I'll, I'll point you to some additional resources and we'll call it a day. So let's move on. So the what's new is a lot is new. Um, as you guys have known, uh, uh, Splunk bought uh, Rigor uh, Monitoring uh, and now Rigor is integrated. What was Rigor Monitoring is now Splunk Synthetic Monitoring. Uh, what was uh, Rigor Optimization uh, is now Splunk Web Optimization. Uh, it's the same best-in-class solution for uh, synthetic monitoring, for troubleshooting, for performance monitoring, but now it's just simply integrated across the entire Splunk platform. Uh, and Billy's gonna, gonna take you through that today. Um, so Billy, do you wanna just put this in context uh, for Splunk synthetic monitoring within digital experience monitoring within the larger Splunk observability suite? You wanna take it away? Yes, absolutely. So when we say digital experience monitoring, the way that differs from say application performance monitoring is other types of infrastructure monitoring you might be familiar with is that it's trying to measure the experience the end user has, which means that you have to expand the scope beyond just say the back end infrastructure or uh, microservices and actually uh, measure it from the client. Now with synthetic uh, testing, uh, that's actually spinning up uh, web browsers and actually measuring what the web browser sees, or in the case of real user monitoring, RUM, which uh, Splunk just recently launched, that's installing a little JavaScript snippet so that all of the visitors to your sites are sort of like secret shoppers that beacon back, hey, by the way, this is the experience I just had accessing your site. This was the load times and um, uh, metrics that I saw. So both synthetic monitoring and real user monitoring constitute digital experience monitoring. And all of this is just one of the facets of a comprehensive observability suite. Next slide, please, Matt. So why do we need this? Well, we need to expand our POV because web applications uh, and, and API services have expanded quite a bit. Um, if you could click for me, Matt. Um, traditionally, something like application performance monitoring or infrastructure monitoring, it's something that you would deploy on the infrastructure that you own, your application tier, your database tier, your, your distributed servers or um, um, microservices, the, the database, things like that. Um, but your modern applications actually have spread beyond sort of infrastructure you control. You know, there's really no amount of money you can pay Akamai to let you put an agent on an Akamai system to beacon back that rich trace data you usually get from an APM system. Um, you know, we have uh, customers that are running their entire platform on top of say, uh, you know, a hosted version of WordPress or Magento or Oracle Commerce Cloud. Uh, they're pulling in third-party JavaScript snippets, chat widgets, um, you know, mailing widgets, analytics widgets. Any one of these things could fail and that would cause the end user to have a bad experience but if you're only looking at APM or IMM, you won't see it. Um, and so we want to expand the POV to holistically measure performance. Please click for me, Matt. 
And that's really what RUM and synthetics and digital experience monitoring lets you do. Because we're coming at this from the outside in, we're able to measure to say, oh, wait a minute, this third party is kind of slow. Oh, wait a minute, we're getting 400s from this CDN. So you really need both. It's not either or, it's holistic. You want all of these part, all of these tools as part of a suite. So you get holistic view of the application's performance. Uh, next slide, please. So let's dive into a detailed work uh, demo of how we identify front end performance issues with synthetic specifically, and then also something we call Splunk web optimization that actually lets us go ahead and find out what are specific things we could do to get better. Um, and Matt, I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen. Let's go here. There. There we go, excellent. So this is Splunk Synthetic Monitoring. I'm looking at, uh, I have set up a monitor which is gonna spin up a headless version of Chrome and it's gonna be measuring this test website rooms to go from all locations all around the world. And I'm gonna be tracking the performance and understanding what's actually going on um, with this site. And we can see that performance is usually pretty good, but we can see actually we saw a big spike and everything's starting to load really slow and it's loading slowly regardless of the geographic location. We can see, you know, Oslo, France, Belgium, uh, Stockholm, but also even here, Montreal, Northern California. So we can see that all the, this is a global issue. Um, actually breaking in to look at something that's uh, called largest contentful paint. This is uh, one of Google's core web vitals. It's sort of the way Google assesses the experience of your site. And we can see the same thing. There's been a dramatic uptick in when the largest contentful paint happens. It's usually only a second or two, and now it's taking upwards of 10 seconds. So let's figure out what's going on. Um, the really great thing about synthetic monitoring or really digital experience monitoring in general is because we're coming from the client, we can collect so much information about what the client is experiencing. And so in this case, we're actually able to capture a video. This is what it looks like when the site loads. Now, a lot of people on the webinar probably experienced this, a very slow loading image in the background that's sort of pacing in as it's downloading. And then finally, the, the, uh, the site loads and it's been a, a completed experience for the user. That's very jarring. That's what's actually contributing to this really bad largest contentful paint. I also am able to see that this page is downloading about 20 megs of content, which seems a little excessive. Now we have a great waterfall view of all the resources that were downloaded when this page was loading. And we can see one thing right here and hero image is 20 megs and took a really long time to download. It took over four seconds to download and it's pushing the whole waterfall to the right. That's delaying JavaScript. That's delaying all of these things where the user could start actually uh, you know, signing up for a newsletter or buying <laughs> this incredible broom. Now, so we've been able to use digital experience monitoring uh, techniques like synthetic monitoring to detect a front end performance issue. Um, this would not necessarily show up if you're just looking at the back end. So this is a great example of that holistic approach, but we can go one step forward. We can actually view an optimization analysis. So what this is, this is Splunk web optimization. We have a list of over 340 performance best practices that we're validating you with guests to make sure that you're actually um, following well-known best practices. And in this case, we've identified a number of problems with this site. The biggest one is right here. There's a JPEG image or an image that should be a JPEG that's served by a ping. And so for each issue, we kind of explain what that's talking about and how to resolve it using different approaches. But this is actually what we're flagging. We're flagging that hero image. And what we're saying is this image is 20 megs in size but because it's a ping image, but if it was saved as a JPEG, a properly exported JPEG, it would be less than half a meg. So you're talking about a 95% savings. And we can actually see, here's the original image and here's the optimized image. So now we know why this page was slow. This page was slow and Google is gonna start penalizing it and the users had a bad experience because an image was exported from Photoshop incorrectly and was published to the site that was big and bloated and caused lots of bad performance issues. This is the type of thing you can get with digital experience monitoring. The, the next issue I wanted to show is something a little bit more subtle, but also helpful. This is a product page. We can see sort of inconsistent performance. Um, I'm measuring a very specific uh, page on this site. And when we look at it, we can see, hey, it kind of takes a little while for load. It's, it, there's almost four seconds 
uh, before something actually appears other than the header. So what's actually going on? Why was the user looking at a white screen? Everybody on this webinar has done this. They've been looking at their phone and just seeing a white screen. Well, if we scroll down to this waterfall view, we can actually see that there is a third party JavaScript file that is taking a very long time to download. It's taking three something seconds to download. And the entire page is blocked waiting for this JavaScript to download because it, it, this JavaScript could rewrite the DOM. It could do all sorts of things. So what happens is, is the browser, when it starts downloading this JavaScript file, everything else freezes because it doesn't know what that JavaScript file is gonna do. And only after it downloads can the rest of the page keep rendering. And so the reason it takes you know, five something seconds before the user can actually see this item and then click on it to you know, start the buying process and actually generate revenue for you, it's because of this third party JavaScript. And again, this is a really great example of, you, know, you may have a phenomenal DevOps team. Um, I guarantee you, um, some other department in the company has put something on the website, an analytics package, an A-B testing framework, a, um, a chat widget, a salesforce.com integration, something like that. A little snippet has been added. You know, JavaScript tags are added so much to websites. We have a whole class of products called tag managers that help you manage these things. But you may be awesome at DevOps, but someone has put a piece of JavaScript that's working on a third party, and that is what's causing this to slow down. If this file was not there, was properly optimized, or was maybe being served locally instead of from a third party, this entire waterfall would shift to the left. And instead of looking at a white screen for multiple seconds, this broom would have appeared much faster and you would see much more engagement with the page and a better overall user experience. Another great example of something that digital experience uh, monitoring um, really expands your point of view. The final thing I wanted to show is you might say, oh, Billy, of course, you're just cherry picking examples that make the front end look like an issue. I, you know, we are a very back end heavy application. You know, Matt, I was actually working with a, uh, a customer uh, just last week and they are, uh, they actually have a web based version of AutoCAD. It's actually pretty impressive. So they're just like, we're not one of these little podunky stores where somebody puts an unoptimized image of a broom. Uh, you know, we're a serious CAD application. How, you know, it's all about the back end. How could this help us? Well, let me give you a really great example. I'm not going to use the customer, obviously, but this is a checkout flow. The really great thing about synthetic tests is that you can script a flow. And in this case, we can actually see I'm going to start at a URL. I'm going to click on a particular product. I'm going to clicking on adding to the cart. And I'm going to start a checkout process. So this actually lets us validate a business flow. And instead of just getting a, having a dashboard somewhere in a beautiful Splunk UI that says how your errors are going or what the response time is, you actually could have part of that dashboard saying, is my uh, business flow working properly? Um, and so that's what this is doing here. And we can see that there's actually two errors that happened. So let's actually click in and see what one of those is. This is one of the, um, the errors we had. Remember, it's a multi-stage flow where we're first uh, starting with an item, and then we are going to go ahead and uh, click, uh, click into that item. We're going to click Add to the Cart, and then we're going to ultimately try to check out. And we can see we've clicked the Checkout button because the little spinner goes from Checkout to being a spinner. And then we get to this error page. So we're able to capture all of that. Um, and we can actually see what the error page was. And we can see that there were four pages that we went through. I'm gonna go ahead and actually go to that fourth page. We can see the fourth page, this is where the error happens. And we can see right here in the waterfall that there's a 400 error. So this is definitely something APM would see. Somewhere a DevOps team or an SRE team just got an alert or is looking on a dashboard and saying, wait a minute, we're seeing an increase in our 400s. What's going on? Now, what's really interesting here is because we're using digital experience monitoring, we're collecting so much information about the front end. Instead of just having an error that says, hey, there's a 400, let's try to figure out what's going on. We can see what was happening on the front end when that error happened for this user. We can see that, hey, there's actually a missing, um, I, there's a missing item ID and there's a missing parameter. And so not only that, we can understand the path 
the user took to get there. We know that it's not just adding and trying to check out any item that causes this error. It's this particular broom that's having the problem. And we understand exactly by playing back, we can say, hey, did the user do something where um, they maybe changed quantity or they tried to ship to an unknown zip code? Like we're able to see exactly what the user did to reproduce the error. So digital experience monitoring is not just about expanding the scope so you can understand what the user is experiencing and how that affects your business. Digital experience monitoring with synthetics, but also ROM allows you to understand the context of your backend errors and solve those performance problems and errors that much faster. And Matt, that's why I'm so excited that we've added uh, specifically Splunk Synthetics and Splunk Web Optimization, but also Splunk ROM to our already awesome observability suite. Back to you. Thanks, Billy. Uh, fantastic context. Let me just go ahead and share my screen again. Um, again, the theme for the day is getting more out of uptime and performance monitoring. Uh, Billy took you through uh, uh, um, three pretty in-depth showcases. So let's kind of reiterate what the use cases are for the, the breadth of what you can do now with Splunk, now that Splunk um, uh, has a best-in-class synthetic solution. Kind of case one, uh, uptime and API monitoring. You can monitor and alert on all of your service endpoints, the uh, uptime and the performance of your APIs, uh, measuring and enforcing SLAs all from a single pane of glass. Now with Splunk, uh, it's full page loads, full page uh, captures, it's real browser monitoring. Um, uh, all of the components of your web pages, those hero images, those web vitals, uh, everything that Billy was talking about and, and showing earlier. Uh, it's your key business transactions. So you can monitor, uh, you can simulate, monitor, capture, alert, and detect uh, and resolve any problems through things like uh, your login process, user authentication, your checkout flow, your, your payment submission process, uh, those things that are key to your digital business uh, and that your end users need to uh, have a great experience with. Uh, it's web performance optimization uh, from images to fonts to cookies. Um, we, uh, Splunk now offers uh, through Splunk Synthetic Monitoring and, and Splunk uh, Web Optimization, uh, a, a thorough and detailed uh, best practices, measurements, uh, video capture, uh, replay, and guided recommendations on how to improve, uh, to improve your web performance and to optimize your pages. Uh, it's also front-end and back-end visibility. Uh, Splunk connects your front-end, the client-side performance, with back-end. Uh, as you can see here, um, Splunk, is, uh, Splunk Synthetics connects with uh, Splunk APM on the back end. Uh, so you can jump from client side performance to server side performance. Uh, you can compare your end user uh, experience versus your infrastructure health. Um, we have new integrations and here you can see uh, just an infrastructure uh, dashboard that shows client side performance. And finally, it's uh, incident response and troubleshooting. Uh, you can connect alerts and communications all within Splunk. This is Splunk on call. Uh, and there are some documents and, and blog posts that you can uh, get started with uh, uh, right away uh, within this um, deck. Here's some additional resources, uh, just three quick things. And just a side note, you can always ask your Splunk account rep uh, about a POC or for uh, uh, some more support. Uh, for helpful content, um, I have added uh, a, th th there's product briefs, uh, just kind of snapshots of uh, the what's and why's of this, uh, the Splunk product in general. Uh, there are white papers uh, free for you to access in this deck here, uh, a guide to monitoring APIs for performance um, uh, and more. Uh, there's a link to all of the helpful docs. Uh, there's a new blog post that thoroughly details the new integrations from what was Rigor now into uh, Splunk to help you get started right away. And of course, you can always continue the conversation in the community. Um, you can sign up or sign into the community. Um, uh, you can search for the tag uh, synthetic monitoring to continue a conversation. 
uh, add discussions to uh, the DevOps section uh, or even the IT ops section, uh, whatever you want. Um, and you can uh, throw your ideas in there. You can search, vote, uh, request enhancements or solutions. So that's all we got today. Uh, Billy, thanks for your time. Uh, appreciate the walkthrough here. Um, it was great to have you guys with us. There's much more to come from Splunk Synthetic Monitoring. So now let's just leave it up to uh, leave this open for some Q&A and questions from the audience.